So to get started with the hood, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my masking tape again. Um, I love taping stuff up because one, you uh, alleviate that you know ability to, to scratch stuff up. and That's why all the plastic still on this thing. I don't want to damage anything. Um, and uh, it's really, really simple if you use the tape correctly to put lines on this car uh, to you know, align the hood and get the hood in the right spot and then mark the hood for where it needs to be cut at. So the first thing I'm going to do is all the way around the perimeter of the hood, even on the cowl, I'm going to give myself a thick piece of tape. I'm currently out of two inch tape. I would do this in two inch tape if I had more, but I'm out. So I'm going to use my one and a half inch tape and just hope, hope it's long enough that it uh, does the task I need it to. Okay, so step one of hood mounting Give myself a perimeter line all the way around. I want my line to line up with my inside border right on the edge of the seam where the hood overlaps the fender. So when we first put the hood on, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's well oversized. The reason why they do this is some cars are a shorter wheelbase than others. So they have to have that nose length to accommodate those longer cars. That's why you have a fender overlap on your doors. They can't do it at the back of the door because generally the, the rear hoop and the back tires are all you know similar distances apart. All the wheelbase comes in difference is right here in the fender. So with that they have to make the hood long and you're going to trim a bunch off if you have a short car. If you have a long car, you're going to trim less off, obviously, and you're going to trim less off the fender. You'll have less of an overlap there. Knowing that the hood is long and we're going to have to trim the majority off the back of it, you've got to keep in mind at the front of this hood, there is a bit of a body line. I know it's difficult to see, but if you go too far back and you shorten the front of this, all of a sudden you're going to have this big humped up spot that doesn't seal to your nose. The nose doesn't have that. The nose is perfectly flat. So be aware when you start trimming, you've got to make sure you're as far forward as you can be so that you don't get that, that goofy humped up spot. And there's one on each side. So the first thing that I do is I go through and I figure out where exactly I can put it, where how far back I can cut it, and I mark it there, and then I know where I've got to line up with with my nose. So those two marks right there are as far back as I'm going to be able to cut and still get the hood to lay flat on the nose. Now that I know where the end of these body lines are, I need to know where my center is. Um, again, just like having the hood too far forward and having a weird spot, you don't want to get the nose, the hood too far offset against the nose because then your lines aren't going to be straight and it just looks kind of funky again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a piece of tape here. I can measure between my two lines and put myself a center line mark there and then I'm going to do the same thing in the back. Okay, I've now got my center mark back there. I've got my center marked here, and I know where my length is. I'm ready to start aligning the hood. The last thing I need to look at is I need to look at the contour of the hood versus the contour of my fender. And it looks really good. I think we're really close there. This side is up just a little bit, but I think it's just because of the length. It is way long on this side. I think it looks really good. So to lock it down, I'm going to take my masking tape and being very gentle so I know it doesn't move, I'm just going to kind of give this thing some support, some tape support, just to keep it from bouncing around. Now that I have it supported here, I'm going to give myself an alignment line so that I know every time I come back, I know where I've got to be. Okay, so what I've got going on here, this diagonal piece of tape keeps the hood from moving around. Both of them, the hood kind of wants to slide off the front of the car, so it's keeping it from sliding forward, which is also keeping it from sliding around. The second piece of tape, as well as this, uh, this uh, horizontal piece of tape and my measurement here, are so that whenever I put the hood back on, I can line it up correctly. 
I can line it up off of this piece of tape so I know I'm correct this way. I can also line it up or measure the distance from the edge of this piece of tape. It is five inches. Both sides have the same measurements. So I should be pretty easy to set the hood in here. As long as I'm centered there on that, on my alignment mark, and I've got these measurements the same, everything should be correct. So now I can take the hood off, trim it, bring it back over, set it on, and know that I'm in the same spot every time. Oh, it looks pretty primitive but um, that's why I use this wider tape all I've got to do is get my cut somewhere in the middle of that border tape that I've put around there and it makes my life a lot easier I like to use the two inch tape because it gives me more fudge room in case I screw something up this one and a half inch tape will still be fine but I would never attempt to do this with three quarter inch tape Now, as you can see, we've got our entire perimeter line exposed all the way around the back of the hood, all the way down the sides, both sides, the front. We're looking really good. Now, here's the money shot. The reason why I put this perimeter line down and the reason why it's been so crucial to get this lined up inside of that perimeter line is now I can use that line as my final draft for where my hood's got to fit. This is one and a half inch white tape. It's this exact same tape. It's the same roll, same everything. So now all I've got to do to find where exactly my line is, is I take my tape and I realign it over top of it. Now, if I go directly over edge to edge, it's going to sit right on top of that edge. Well, I want it to sit just inside of that edge. So I'm going to give myself about an eighth of an inch exposed on the bottom one. And then when I trim this inside line, it will be absolutely perfect. Make sure that you're not pushing too hard down because what will happen is this fender and this, this hood seam will change itself and then you may end up cutting too much off. Your gap may be large, your gap may be too small. So just gently make sure you apply this tape to the hood. And now when I cut perfectly on this edge here, my hood's going to fit absolutely perfect. Now that it's all taped up, I'm ready to take it off and do my final cut. Anywhere where there's a large amount of tape overhanging, um, I, I go through and I trim that off there. I, I don't want to try to remove this hood if that tape is sticking down to the panel below it. Say the tape's sticking to the fender and I try to take that off, it will move that line on me. So before I do anything, I want to go through and cut all those big overlaps and make sure my tape is all the way up like you see here. Anytime you're using a blade to cut tape like this, make sure you're really delicate. You don't want to push too hard and gouge that material underneath.
<clears throat> Here's where you can see where I did my cutting. I cut right on the line. I didn't leave any blue on the white and I didn't leave any white on the blue. I'm now ready to fit the hood for the final time and I no longer need any of this alignment stuff because if it's correct and I did it all right, it'll lay right in the channel and it's only going to sit in there in one way. So I can take all this stuff off. And there we have it. We've got nice tight gaps all the way around it. It sits down in its channel perfectly. That's the best way I found to mount a hood. I like it. By the time the hood pins get in, they will hold these corners tight. Um, this is just the fiberglass doing that. Uh, it, nothing wrong with the way we've done anything. It's just kind of held up, but now we've got great seams all the way around. We're now ready to put our hood hinges in it and uh, the hood pins and this thing's ready to send home. One final thing that I will do to this hood before I final install it is I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand all the edges, all the sides, the back, um, around the front. And what this is going to do is it's going to get rid of any little nicks or gouges or anything that my saw left. It's just going to smooth it all out. I do this on all my corners. Anywhere where I do any cutting on my fiberglass, anywhere where I trim uh, along the back sides of these fenders, everywhere that I get an opportunity to, I take my sandpaper and I sand those edges. It's just a nice clean edge there. And if you run, run the back of your hand on it, it's not going to gouge you or cut you like this fiberglass did. Um, it just smooths everything out. It, it's like taking a sharp knife and making it into a butter knife. I'm now working on installing my hood hinges on this road course car and as you can see I've had to cut out a relief for this hood hinge and the reason being when the inside the piece that attaches to the hood is installed it's going to need that area to sit in if you were just to cut a slot in it and put the uh, hinge underneath and rivet it to the, the fender this is going to hit the inside flange when it goes down you need to have that so that the hood sits nice and flush. I prefer to trim into the fender a little bit beyond the hood seam line. That way, when I cut it out, I don't have to worry about that lower ledge holding the edge of my hinge up. When the hinge goes underneath, any elevation height difference on this bottom seam will, will create a low spot over here when you rivet it down. So to combat that, what I'll do is, after I get it cut out, I'll take my sandpaper and I'll smooth my edge out. Then I will sand underneath until it is perfectly flat. Once I have all of my trimming done, I can put my hinge underneath and I can mark it and I can Clico it. Another thing, you got to make sure that the hood pin hinge hole, the pivot hole, is as far back as you can get it. If it's too far back, it's going to hit the cowl, but if it's too far forward, when the hood lifts up, it'll impact the cowl. So keeping this back about to the center of where that seam is will give you plenty of room to lift the hood and not run into any issues. You can see from this angle where my hood hinge pivot is, and when the hood lifts up, it's got plenty of room to clear at the cowl. In order to locate the bottom part of my hood hinge, I've got my fender side mounted, it's all clicoed in, and it's solid. I get my hood exactly where I want it, and I tape it in place so I know my gap doesn't change. You can see here how I am taped down all the way around. My gap is absolutely perfect. Then what I'll do is I'll add a washer in between the two pieces and I will lock them together with a clamp. This ensures that when it's all done and mounted, I don't have a rubbing issue between the two. I've got just enough of a gap there that it allows it to move freely and it doesn't bind every time you try to open or close it. I've got my relief cut so that my fender side of my hinge sits perfectly flat and it's nice and tight. I've got my clamps in there. My gap is held together. 
I'm ready to go ahead and drill. I'm going to drill from the bottom side up. Now, when you're drilling from the bottom side up, you got to be really careful because if you push too hard, you'll actually break out a chunk of this gel coat. This is really light, thin gel coat, and it doesn't take a lot to break that out. So make sure you have a good, sharp drill bit and you push gently as you're drilling so that you don't break anything away from the top of that hood. I'll start off by getting one at the back and one at the front. Try to get the biggest space you can over those two, uh, over that lower mount. That way you have less of an ability for it to move around on you and get out of square. This is how it should look when you pull the clamps off. You've got a nice gentle gap right between those. Looks good. We're now ready to set the hood pins. The first thing I do is I install them and I run them down all the way to the bottom setting. Running them all the way down gives me the tightest fit as I can get with my hood so I know it's the closest to its adjustment. If they were standing way up and I tried to set my hood on it, I may end up drilling the hole in the wrong spot because it's got to travel so much further down to get to the nose. There's a couple ways we can go about marking these on the hood. One way, which is probably the easiest way, is to put tape on the inside of the hood and then when you set it down you can kind of push on it a little bit and it'll leave a small indention and then you can drill it from the inside out another way you can do it is take like this here is some copper anises and you can put a small dot on the top of your hood pin and then when you set it down it will leave a mark on the bottom of the hood and you can drill in that exact spot a third way you can go about doing it is by marking it from the outside from two different directions. Draw a small mark on it and come back at it from this direction and then drill a hole at your intersecting lines. All three types work really, really well. As you can see, there's my mark. There's my mark again. That one's the easiest one to see. And then there's my mark. I'll start out by drilling a 1 8 inch hole so that I can verify that I'm exactly located. And if I need to fudge my hole around a little bit when I oversize it to 3 8 it's easy to do at this point. So now that I got my 1 8 inch hole, I put it down and I can mark exactly where it's sitting on top of my hood pin. And then when I open my hood, I can see we're just a little bit forward on this one. So now when I drill my hole out, I can work it back just a little bit so that I know I'm centered. My next step, I made the adjustments while I was drilling it and I drilled it out to a one quarter inch hole and now I can look and see the top of the hood pin and I am perfectly centered. At this point, if I was still off a little bit, when I go to my next step, I can go, I can readjust my hole at that point. Now that I verified that all four holes are exactly where they need to be, I can run them out to three eighths and not worry about anything being misaligned. When I drill out my hood pin holes, I need to be 3 8 because I've got 3 8 hood pins. I use my step drill. If you use a drill bit, chances are that the, the two flutes will rip right through and it'll leave a jagged edge. So by using a step bit, it makes a nice clean hole. Mark your step bit one size bigger. So this one is marked at just over 7 16 So my hole will be 7 16 If you go 3 8 they're 3 8 hood pins, it's going to be such a tight fit that it, you're going to have a hard time getting the hood open and shut. So by oversizing those just a hair, and note, you will have scuff plates that will go on this hood. It just makes life a little bit easier, and you can move them around a little bit if you need to. There you go. That's what it should look like. Perfect. 
When you're setting your hood pins for the final time, I prefer to keep them as tight as possible to keep as little air getting underneath the hood as possible. I prefer to always point them towards the back of the car. This way if you get up underneath somebody and it gets hit, it just shoves it in. If it went the other direction and you got up underneath somebody, you have the potential of knocking the hood pin out and having your hood come loose. Well, thanks for following along on the project. Um, I'm glad it turned out as good as it did, and I hope you guys learned something. If um, if you see something that you guys could use uh, benefit from from me making a video on, you know, shoot me a message on Messenger, look me up on Facebook. Um, whatever I can do to help you guys out, to help you guys save money and get to more races, have more car count. That's ultimately the goal. Uh, racing is a difficult sport; it's expensive, and to pay a guy like me to do this um, when you can learn how to do it and do it yourself and uh you know save that money um i think it's just going to help everybody so we need these cars at the racetrack we need to work together to get more guys to stay at the racetrack consistently and um yeah whatever i can do to help you guys out so you get your cars better um, faster have more fun and ultimately save money um you know whatever i can do to help thank you if you guys like the video um give us a like share subscribe if you see somebody that could benefit from one of these videos uh, tag them in it, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep the ball rolling. On to the next project.